Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine, and I am going to run you through some practice uh, heat problems. So we're going to practice solving heat problems. Problem 1, solving for Q, heat absorbed. Remembering that Q is the variable that we use whenever heat is absorbed or released during a physical or chemical process. The problem is how much energy in joules is absorbed when 43.0 grams of water is heated from 11.5 degrees C to 71.2 degrees C. So the first thing you always want to do is identify the variables. So in this case, Q is going to be our question mark because we're being asked how much energy in joules. M in this case is 43.0 grams. Whenever you see grams, you know that, that means mass. C, in this case, since we're talking about water, the C for water, specific heat, is the constant that you're always given, um, and that's 4.184 joules per gram degree C. And in this case, uh, the initial temperature, T1, is 11.5, and then the T2, or the final temperature, in this case, is 71.2 degrees C. So then you calculate delta T, and delta T is always T2 minus T1. So in this case, 71.2 minus 11.5, and that comes out to 59.7 degrees C. So now we need to determine which equation to use, and our equation is Q equals M times C times delta T. Now, we plug the numbers into the equation. So starting again with our equation, Q, heat, is equal to M times C times delta T. We're solving for Q, so we don't need to rearrange our equation. Just plug the numbers in. So Q here is going to be the mass. You see I've plugged in 43.0 grams times our specific heat capacity, which is our C, times our delta T. The next thing to do is to always check your units out and make sure that they cancel. So grams divided by grams equals 1, so it cancels out, it goes away. And degrees C divided by degrees C also cancels out, so it goes away. That means we're left with J joules, and that's the appropriate unit for energy. So then plugging it into the calculator, we get 10,740.7464 joules. That has way more significant digits than we need. So we go back and look at our problem, and it looks like three significant figures were the number uh, for all of our variables. So Q then is going to be rounded. You count from the left. The third significant digit is the 7. The number after it is a 4, and the rule is... 4 and below, you let it go, so our number rounds to 10,700 joules. The second problem I thought we would try would be solving for specific heat, C. So the problem is a 55.8 gram sample of an unknown metal absorbs 7,500 joules of energy. Its temperature goes from 25 to 75.5 degrees C. So what is the specific heat capacity of the metal? As always, identify the variables. In this case, the Q is given, and that's 7,500 joules. The mass is 55.8 grams. C is what we're solving for, so it's a question mark. T1 is the initial temperature, 25.0. T2 is the final temperature, 75.5. So our delta T is going to be T2 minus T1, so that's 50.5 degrees C. Now, determine the equation to use. Well, we have to rearrange our equation, and so when we're solving for C, C is going to be equal to Q divided by M times delta T. Now we're ready to plug the numbers into the equation. So our C is equal to Q divided by M times delta T, plugging in our Q and our M and our C. Then the next thing we always do is check our units, make sure they cancel. In this case, nothing cancels. And if you remember, 
the definition of specific heat capacity is how much energy in joules per gram degree C. So remember, specific heat capacity has a kind of funny unit, a complex unit, we'll call it. Now, plugging that all into our equation or our calculators and remembering 7,500 divided by 55.8 and then divided by 50.5. You have to hit divide twice because both of these numbers are in the denominator. And when it's in the denominator, you must divide. So plugging it in, we get C equal to 2.661556 joules per gram degree C. We consult the equation. This number has three significant digits. This has two. This has three. This has three. We always round to the number with the fewest significant digits, in this case, two. So we need to round this number to two significant digits. So our second significant digit is the six. But because the number after it is a six, it will round to 2.7 joules per gram degree C. Okay, we're ready for another problem. This time we'll solve for mass. The question is a metal with a specific heat capacity of 3.64 joules per gram degree C. It absorbs 4,500 joules of energy, and that results in a change in temperature of 35 degrees C. What was the mass of the metal? Notice in this problem we're not given a T2 and a T1. We're just given the delta T. So as always, identify the variables. In this case, Q is the 4,500 joules. M is what we're solving for, so it's a question mark. C is given, and that's the 3.64 joules per gram degree C. And our delta T, we don't have to calculate. It was given as 35 degrees C. Now we're ready to determine which equation. So rearranging, we're going to get M is equal to Q divided by C times delta T. So here's our equation. Now we need to plug in the numbers. So our mass is equal to the Q times the specific heat, C, times the delta T. Always check your units. Joules divided by joules equals 1. It goes away. Degree C divided by degree C equals 1. So it goes away. So our unit is going to be 1 over 1 over grams, so our unit will end up being grams. And so our mass comes out to be 35.32182 grams. Consulting the problem, we see that two of the numbers in our problem had only two significant digits, the 4,500 and the 35. So that means we'll round this number to the second significant digit. In this case, it will be the 5. So our mass is equal to 35 grams. The fourth problem we're going to solve for delta T. So the question is a 72.6 gram sample of a metal that has a specific heat of 6.89 joules per gram degree C absorbs 8,750 joules of energy. Its initial temperature is 31.4. What is the final temperature? Identify the variables. We're given the Q, we're given the M, we're given the C, we're given T1. In order to find T2, we need to solve for delta T because delta T is T2 minus T1. So we're going to solve for delta T first, and then we'll be able to determine the final temperature. Which equation should we use? We're going to solve for delta T. So delta T is equal to Q divided by m times c. Here's our equation again. Now we plug in our numbers, and again, our 87.50, our 72.6, and our 6.89. Need to check the units. Joules divided by joules cancels out. Grams divided by grams cancels out. We're left with 1 over 1 over degree c, which will be degree c when simplified. So our delta t comes out to 17.4925 degrees C. Now we have three significant digits for all our measurements, so I'm rounding to 17.5 degrees C. Now we can solve 
for our T2. Recalling that T2 is T1 plus delta T, so our T2 is going to be our T1 from over here, 31.4, plus our delta T that we just solved for, which is 17.5, and so our final temperature in this case was 48.9 degrees C. I hope that solving these four problems together helped a little bit, and we'll be solving some more problems, and I'll be making a new tutorial for you soon. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.